The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the uh, April 21st uh, Fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on in at 877-927-664. I would love to hear from you. Now, if you got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any. And every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Well, right now, we've got a slightly mixed bag out there. That slightly mix is coming from the Dow trannies, which are up about eight points, so basically flat. Other U.S. indices to the downside. Dow's up 19 points. S&P's up three. NASDAQ's up 12. Russell's down seven. Semis are down 30. Gold is also up 30. Light sweet crude is down a buck 87. Silver's off 25 cents. Natural gas is down a nickel. 30-year treasury down 17. The U.S. dollar index is uh, up a nickel out there, so no big movement uh, that way. But let's go try to figure out what all these charts here mean by taking a look at um, let's look at our daily equity future contracts. Here's the daily time frame. The upper left hand corner, you've got the ES mini. You can see we've got a nice little rising trend line that has been established. Prices testing that. If price closes below that trend line area, where would that close be? Well, at least if you got to close at 41.30, I'd say. Uh, you close below that uh, line, and that would then suggest to you and I, well, momentum will have waned, and uh, that would suggest to move back to about the 4118 area. In the case of the NQ, I've got a little bit shorter uh, trend line out there. Uh, prices tested for many days. The top of that daily profile, 1306295. A close below that could be signaling to move back to the 12705-12777 area. To, for the Dow equity future contract, it's consolidated with inside its daily profile. The Dow is probably the one to be watching most today, those of you that are bearish uh, with regard to the markets overall. And I can start to see that now. We can start to see we've got lower highs for the last four trading days now inside each of the equity future contracts out here. So we're seeing that. We're seeing in many instances low, just slightly lower lows as well. Here, in the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, if price did close below 33,819, that will suggest a change in trend. It suggests lower price. Now, it's the Dow or the YM is the only one that is testing profile support as we speak. The others are well aware from that. So that's why I say the Dow is probably the indice for you to focus on today. Not that the others aren't worth focusing on, but the Dow could release the biggest piece of information. And inside the Russell, it's just a consolidation with inside its uh, daily profile. So nothing there to report on. What else do we know? Well, let's take the opportunity to go take a look at market breadth right now. We've seen a bit of a rally. Uh, let's go figure out what intraday market breadth is. Well, as we take a look at the 30-minute uh, time frame for the S&P 500, we'll see that it has negative market breadth. What I mean by negative market breadth, there are more instruments trading below the 30-minute profile, which is support. There's 204 to be exact versus 125 trading above profile, above resistance. That is the S&P 500. 
What is the NASDAQ 100 doing? Let's get its market breadth data and statistics. It's, it's pretty close here. Here we're looking at 32 above and 29 below. So we have the opposite message that we have inside of the ES Mini. How is that helpful? Well, it'll be helpful when we go take a look at those intraday charts to see what's going on there. So we know that, um, we know that uh, we're market breadth bullish on the NQ. We're market breadth bearish on the ES for its 30 minute time frame. But take a look at the S&P 500 for the other four time frames. You've got bullish for the weekly, daily, 240 and 60 out there. Hmm, something to think about. If we take a look at the NASDAQ 100, it happens to be bullish for the weekly, daily and 240, but bearish for its 60 minute. So uh, all of this, what does all of this mean, Stevie? It means we've got a choppy market out there when we just simply take a look at market breadth. So let's do this. Let's go try to figure out in this choppy market out here, what are those equity future contracts doing? So we'll change charts. We'll go take a look at the white background charts and we'll begin by taking a look at the ES mini. In the upper left hand side momentarily, you'll see the daily time frame. You won't see that trend line, uh, but you do see the new profile, 4188 resistance, 4118 support. So what do we have? We take a look at those intraday charts out there. Don't have anything on the five hour, the four hour, the two hour that is really, really worth reporting on. The 60 minute, the hourly chart, which we just took a look at, had some negative market breadth, is in the process of potentially forming a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. The reason I have to say potential, it's only 11, 12. This is an hourly chart. Bar doesn't complete until 12 noon. But as we speak right now, that's the pattern that appears to be in place. There is a TD nine count bottom inside the 30 minute time frame chart. I don't, well, maybe that was negated. Give me a second here to just uh, check in on that. That low was 41, 41, 50. Where was this close? Oh, that's well below it. 41, 40, oh, it was not. 41, so you still have a TD nine count bottom on the 30-minute time frame. Okay, so this this becomes very cool, very easy. Uh, you love it when the you love it when the chart tools provide you and I with information, and we can see that it's already been tested information. And so, therefore, what you and I know is 41.55 is the real key level of resistance for the day. If you see a 30 two consecutive close above 41.55 on a 30-minute basis, we're looking at a further rally. Now, I don't know what patterns might take place after that, but this day, here, a key level of resistance will have failed. It was tested. It's been tested now one, two, three, four times. Uh, maybe the fifth time will be the charm. Let's take a look at the NQ. Uh, this will take uh, just a um, – no, also, well, I guess before we move over off of this, the ES Mini, this could be day number three of consecutive lower closes out here. Last time that we formed a nice bottom, that was on three days of consecutive lows back, closes back on March the 13th. We typically get a two to three bar knee jerk reaction out there. So what, what the ES basically what I'm saying is even if we get a lower close today, what seems to be setting up is possibly a bounce on Monday, a bounce or a bottom there. Let's go take a look at the NQ, see what uh, signals we might have outside of the NQ. Remember, the NQ is bullish on its 30-minute profiles, and it's bearish on its 60-minute uh, profiles out there. Let's get these charts here popular. This is going to take just a, a few moments out there. And uh, thanks for all the requests. I see this bunch of requests that are pouring in. So we're going to take a look at Netflix. We're going to look at Slumbershare. We're going to look at Amazon. Dan in the Den, he's got several. OK, MCRB, BTAI, PRQR, and THX. Oh, that just meant thanks. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're going to take a look at the NQ here before we get into uh, some of the requests. And what I see in the NQ is I see several bottoming patterns. So first on the 240, I'll just simply expand out this chart so we're all looking at the exact same thing. You'll see a three drive to a bottom pattern. That's one of uh, Mr. Pesavento's uh, patterns. I think that may have also – I don't think that came from uh, – that did not come from H.M. Uh, Gertley. Um, that came from his buddy in Australia, I think. I could be wrong on it. It doesn't really matter. Now, the way that I use that three drive to a bottom pattern here, it's got to be confirmed with the bullish reversal candle. Now, this is the four-hour chart. This uh, candle here does not complete until 2 p.m. But if we do, right now, we've got a key reversal bar. What I mean by that is both the high and low of that uh, prior bar has been uh, exceeded. And as long as we get one tick in the opposite direction, meaning to the upside out here, you'll have the bullish reversal candle. And so that says we've got a three drive to a bottom pattern. Now, the first area of uh, resistance here is at 13065. That's the bottom of its profile. 13089 is basically another area. That's the red oscillator and change line. 13 one and a quarter, 13206, and then 13241. Those are all the levels where you would expect to see some kind of battles. Now, on the shorter term time frame charts, the 60 minute has a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom pattern. It's had several. They've each failed. Now, prices below a bullish structured. 60-minute profile. We know that the 60-minute uh, market breadth was uh, slightly bearish. I would say that if this is more than just a counter trend move inside the NQ, then price would close above 13116. That's the center of that bullish structure profile. Otherwise, I would expect that's where counter trend rallies will fail. That 13116 level. So watch that. If price get above that odds favor inside the NQ, the 60 minute will have flipped over to a bullish uh, mode. In the case of the 30 minutes, Rose Mintum indicator bottom, the area to watch there is 13098. A close above 13098 is going to suggest, okay, we've got more rally. Well, 13098, a close above that gets us to that 13116 area. And that's the level that you would most certainly want to be watching because that's where a counter trend move could end. Steve, the NQ has a three drive to a top off the same time frame. 
you're looking you're looking at the 120 minute time frame chart that's fine so the topping pattern that uh, you maybe saw out there um so for me this is the 120 minute chart i just want to share with you uh, uh this here seagull for me that's not a three drive to a top on the on the 120 minute chart let, let me just show you the reason why i i believe that and and it is this we're going to flip to a different set of charts here and the reason is because i don't like to force things so this pattern is very specific and it's time between bars maybe you give it one bar or so but you don't give it a whole lot more and it's got to be it's it's a very um so here here's a 240 minute chart so on the 240 minute chart drive one right here at this bar we can see that that sets up the the second drive which is going to be this bar here at 2 a.m on april the 20th so we can see out here that this pattern really should have completed at about six in the morning but uh you know it, it really looks like it completed here at um at 10 in the morning and, uh, and now we're getting that bullish reversal candle. Now, I'm going to switch this to the 120-minute time frame. We'll do the same type of thing. So you have to have time. Uh, as got to be – whoops, how did that work out there? Uh, give me a second here. We try to get the 120-minute chart up. So you have to be equal in time. And so if I'm looking for a three-drive – now, I'm not sure what you're using for your three-drive. So, you so I, 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 to me, it would have been this bar right here at 1,400 hours. If you were to – if you were to use this bar – the one at 800 hours from April the 12th, there's not enough of a move higher. You know, there's not an A to B equal C to There's no nothing out there. So, it, again, it's equal time periods that we would be looking at. So if I were to use this this time period right here and then we just move it there, you can see we're not even close. If I go back and I use this bar here, let's just see what we come up with. But Maybe that's the bar that you're using out here. So we go from here to there. Then I say, okay, if you were to use that, but that to, to me that is not – there's not enough of a move between that high and the next high that we're using for that to really qualify as a as a three drive uh, pattern to me. So it's a cool pattern, but what you really want is you really want it, you know, to show like it does on the bottom of a chart. So on the 120 minute chart here, I would not call this a three drive to a bottom. I had drawn that pattern in there, but but I didn't come back to you at the open of that uh, break that we did and say, hey, we've got a three drive to a bottom. We do on the 240. We don't on the 120. So it's a great pattern. Just don't force it out there. If it exists, it exists. And if it doesn't, hey, no big deal out there. All right. So um, so we know the levels to watch inside the NQ. We know the level to watch inside the ES. So we're all set for the day out here. So let's begin by taking a look at some of the requests. Roger, inside the Tiger's Den, wants to take a look at Netflix. And he's kind of interested in what's Netflix doing actually for the next couple of days. So you know what? I actually need to change charts here because I can show you the trend line. It's trading with inside the uh, Get Smart cone of silence out there so momentarily we'll get to our three panel chart here and there is netflix so it's trading between trend line support and trend line resistance now roger if you can tell me which way this is going to break then i can tell you which way price is going to move but right now here's what we know we know price has held the trend line support but it's trading below the bottom of its profile which is at 324.13 so uh, what's this going to do? It's suggesting it wants to go break that level and perhaps get all the way back to the uh, swing point out here uh, that formed back in uh, March, uh, March the uh, 13th. But the trend line is held. Now, if price can close above the bottom of its profile, you're wondering what is this likely to do? If it can regain support, which is 324.13, well, then it might be signaling it's going to move up to the center of its bear structured profile and its descending trend line. I don't know which way this is going to uh, to break out there, but that's what you're dealing with. And so maybe it's best to look at something other than Netflix, uh, you know, that's going to provide you with some uh, better signals. Now, let's go back to those white background charts, see if there is any better information that we can share with Roger out here. So when we look at the uh, daily time frame. Well, we certainly see a TD nine count top and that formed a TD nine count breakdown resistance. We don't have any kind of a bottom pattern. You could look at this and say this might be an A to B and a C to D, but that retracement is way more than a 0.786 retracement. So I say, nah, that's not an A to B equal C D pattern. So what is it? It's price trading below profile support and into trend line support. And if that trend line support fails, this tells us that price is going to go to 304.14. So I think, Roger, you sit tight here. You watch what price does. Does it get back above the profile? If so, it gets up to the oscillator and change line. Does
Does it uh, get? Uh, does it uh, break the trend line? If so, it gets to the 304.14 area. And that's the best that I've got for you on Netflix, but I think that's pretty good information for you. So I do hope that helps you out. And thanks so much for being the first requester inside the Tiger's Den this morning. The second one is SNP, and SNP wanted to take a look at Schlumberger, which is having a bad day out here. SLB is the uh, ticker symbol. And right now, Schlumberger is trading below the bottom of its daily profile. And that daily profile bottom is 49.87. So if price closes below that, that's signaling to you and I that we're looking at lower price. Now, it's going against a, uh, a gap to the upside that did 20 million shares. That's this uh, trading session right here of April the uh, 3rd. But in the first uh, basic two hours of trading, you've done 5 million shares. So maybe best case you do 15 million shares as it takes on that uh, that gap. So, But maybe price is just closing the gap out here. And to do that, all it needed to do was trade down to the high. Really, I would say it would have been this this high here, which would have been 49.53. And so far, the low, well, we're trading 49.46 right now. So it's certainly closing that gap out there. There are other gaps, as you can see. There's one that's right here on the uh, trading day of March the 29th. Is that a possible price target? Well, if we look at the weekly chart, which has a road momentum indicator top out here, price is trading below its profile support level. So I would say Schlumberger looks to me like it wants to go target 46.72, but we'll confirm that when we get back from this break. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So just to uh, follow up on uh, Schlumberger here, we're seeing this trading right now below the bottom of its daily profile. That's at 49.87. We're below the bottom of the weekly profile, which is 50.81. And so therefore, my assumption is that if price does close below these levels, these profile levels today, we uh, see price target that 46.44 level. That's the bottom of its um, that's the bottom of its uh, monthly profile out there. So that's what I see, SNP, when it comes to Slumberjay. I do hope that that helps you out, and thanks so much for the request out there. We have a request to take a look at Amazon as well. Amazon, that's from Hector. And let's uh, see what Hector is uh, looking at. And Hector writes in, and he says, uh, Happy Fabulous Foster's Friday. I, I do like that Foster's beer out there. Uh, but uh, Innocent Gun, still uh, Stevie's number one out there. I, uh, I love that caramel flavored version that they've got. That one's caramel flavored one, I think, is a little scotch uh, flavored as well. But it's great beer. In any event, uh, Amazon today is confirming an A to B equals CD up. Is that correct? And what are the price projections? Okay, so we're on the right set of charts here. Well, the first thing that you want to know with regard to Amazon is that it's trading right into uh, trend line resistance. So uh, is this area going to hold? It is not much further above where we're trading right now. So I'd say today the top of that would be about the 108.10 area. So we're trading up in that resistance level. And today is going to become bar number seven of a TD9 count. So that says we could get a TD9 count top between Monday and Wednesday of next week as we move into trend line resistance. Now, what Hector is asking about, so I wanted to make sure that I shared that with you. What Hector is asking about with regard to the A to B equals CD pattern, he would like to use as his B point the trading session of April 4th. How do I know that? Well, he actually wrote that down on the uh, email that he sent to me. So that's pretty good. Uh, plus, uh, he's uh, been watching the uh, courses in the uh, uh, Mastering Probability uh, subscribership area out there. Uh, so I know he would have picked that. And I actually, I, I picked that out knowing, believing that. And then I just looked back at my phone to see that that's what he did pick out. Now, that had volume there of 48 million shares. And so far today, you're at 35. That's why what Hector says is, hey, Stevie. We've got a confirmed A to B equals CD to inside of uh, Amazon uh, to the upside. And what are the price projections there? So we take a look at price projection. We're going back to Stevie's A to B equals CD tool. That one to one hectare and Patty would get you to 113.78 to be exact. Is that where price would stop? I think not. So I would say if price can clear the descending trend line, if price can clear the descending trend line without uh, dealing with uh, a TD9 count top, then this should do more than a one to one. And that would take us up into the 118 area, 123 level. And the reason why I believe that it should do that is because the retracement on that B to C leg is only a 41% retracement, much smaller than that point, normal 0.618 area. So this says we should have more strength to get this thing to move to the upside. That is in the case of Amazon. But first, you've got to deal with that trend line resistance level. And so I pay attention to uh, that. And uh, that's all I've got. So Hector and Patty, you have a fabulous Foster's Friday out there. And uh, we'll see you on uh, Monday. The next question coming in from uh, David H. And David wants to take a look at Goldman Sachs. GS is the ticker symbol there. Let's read David's question. David's question goes like this. Happy, fabulous Florida Friday. I'm up with that. You've got Goldman Sachs 340 calls expiring in May. So could you give me your char your your perspective on an upside target? Well, that upside target may be today. Might be worthwhile to go ahead and take the uh, money. Eh, he's probably not in the money. But here's the deal. Uh, you're going to form bar number nine of a T. Well, hold on a minute here. I could be. Here are the parameters. You asked for the parameters, David. Today. If Goldman Sachs can close above, let me give you the number, 33968, we're at 33926. If it can close above 33968, you will have a TD9 count top. And it's just got a spike above it. doesn't have to, uh, no, it's got to close above it. Take that back. So it's got to close above it. It can't close at 33968. It must close above it in order to generate bar number nine. And if you got that, then I would say time to jettison that position out there. If you don't, look, you're still dealing with resistance at 340.45. But if you don't, then at least the TD9 counts go away. Am I on the right chin? Oh, geez, Louise. Stevie, move over, would you? Hold on a second here. Now, let me see. Was that you, Mr. Bill, keeping me straight? Let me see. Oh, I think that it was. 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it's always good to have a wingman out there. So now we got the white background charts for Goldman Sachs. You can see that today, you can see yesterday was bar number eight. But in order for bar number nine to complete, you've got to close above the close of bar number five. You can't close at it. You most certainly can't close below it. You've got to close above it. And that means you got to close at least 339.69 in order to get bar number nine today to form. You've already spiked above bar number five. So it's met that piece of it. Now, what Goldman Sachs also has, if we take a look at the weekly chart, you can see that price right now on a weekly basis is trading right into resistance as well. And that's that red oscillator and change line. Is it slightly above it? Yes. 338.98 to be exact out here. We're at 339.26. So we're sitting right at it. So um, what you, I think what you really want is you really want price to close below that bar number five so you don't get a TD9 count top out there. Uh, but you're still at resistance, and, and you've got resistance, daily resistance, weekly resistance out here. Goldman Sachs on a daily basis, this could be bar number three of consecutive moves higher out here. Yeah, um, uh, the pattern, I mean, uh, yeah. It just says caution. Oh, let's, we'll just say that. It says caution, especially knowing what we know on the daily time frame chart, the other daily chart, and profile resistance out there. So uh, you're up at resistance. Until we know whether price can break through that, and I don't know if it can or can't, David, um, you know, it's not the best-looking trade setup for what it is that you're holding at this moment out there. But I do hope that that information helps you out, and thanks so much for taking the time to write in. And you have a, a fabulous uh, Florida Friday, even though, uh, oh, you're in Panama City. That's David in uh, Panama City. So you definitely have a, a Florida Friday out there. Next request is a take a look at Ethereum. E-T-H-E is the uh, ticker symbol. And Ethereum right now trading at about 919. I'm going to see if at 922 to be exact. So I do have a little bit of a delay uh, issue here. Ethereum formed a TD9 count top. That was right here on the trading day of um, April the 14th. And now price is back inside its profile. It looks like it's headed towards the support zone. So the zone out here for Ethereum, Bob, is going to be between the range of 858 to 901. And below 858, your breakout level of support would be at 815. I would say 901 looks like that is in the uh, cards for sure. We can see that the weekly chart took price all the way up and had a nice TD9 count and Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Took price all the way up to its breakdown level. That breakdown level was 1078 out there. So you're up in a nice area of resistance. Can't bust them up. You try to bust them down. 793 is an area of support on the uh, weekly chart. So that certainly gets it to the 901, 858 level out there. The monthly chart ran into resistance up at its oscillator and change line. So your resistance, 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 Bob. Um, it looks to me like Ethereum wants to pull back uh, further. And I'm going to go with Bob, probably 858 uh, more likely than not. So I hope that that helps you out. The next request is for, what is the next request? I don't think I've got that far. Hecla. That is for Alan the Great. And Alan wants to take a look at Hecla. And we can see Hecla right now. You've got a probable A to B equals CD pattern out here. So I don't know about that retrace. We'll take a look at that on my other system. We'll, we'll go venture over to it. We'll change the uh, screens. Right now, we take a look at Hecla. If you'd ask me, Alan, where is price headed to? I'd ask you where is price headed to and look in at Stevie's charts and I'd say, uh, hint, hint. How about that TD9 count breakout level? 575 is a likely price target for Hecla. But before it does that, it's got to get through that key level of support on the weekly time frame. And that level that you're watching there is 604. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We'll finish taking a look at Hecla. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Uh, mixed bag out there. You've got the uh, NASDAQ that is slightly positive. It's up by 14 points. Uh, the S&P and Dow just tried to go positive, but they failed to do so. Choppy market, which is really what we uh, determined at the uh, beginning of the uh, show. So let's take a look at Heckla. Let's uh, finish looking at Heckla out here. So I mentioned A to B equals CD pattern. Let's go take a look at that on the other uh, screen out here. We'll draw in that uh, pattern here momentarily. Let's get that up on our screen. And with regard to Hecla, is this an A to B equals CD pattern? So a couple different things out here. First, let's draw in the A point. That's up here at that high from uh, April the uh, 13th. B point would be this low that I would use from April 17th, and the C point would be the high the very next day. So that's a 0.382 retracement out there. So you do have a confirm where you have an A to B equals CD pattern. Was it confirmed or not? Well, we can, we can find out. The B point had volume of 6.6 .6 million shares. It was passed with 9.2 million shares. So yes, Heckler confirmed an A to B equals CD to downside. It does that on April the 19th. So now what you're looking for is a bullish reversal candle. And if you get that, that will then confirm a Gartley buy pattern. Where might that take place? No idea. You are starting to run into what could be an area of support around the 596 level, and that is a rising trend line. But no guarantee on that. But what you are waiting, waiting for here, uh, Alan, is you're waiting for a bullish reversal candle that would then take you into long position inside of Hecla. Uh, we've got uh, some questions from Dan inside the Tiger's Den. The first one's going to be MCRB. So MCRB trading at about 634. I'm sure that I've got a delay here. Did I change panels? I didn't. So let's go change over to the white panel screens out here. Give me a moment. We'll get that up. And again, we'll take a look at M MCRB and trying to look for a pattern out here. So the first thing that I see is what? Boy, oh boy, not a lot. So here's what I see. I see that there's a TD9 count pattern, but uh, it's going to form bar number nine today. But that doesn't mean anything uh, because it doesn't uh, qualify as a, a TD9 count pattern. Right now, the high is bar number six of that. What else do we have out here on a daily basis? We have price running in resistance. 
So here's one thing that I can share with you, Dan, on MCRB. You've got a key resistance level at 667. That's a TD9 count breakdown area. We've seen price hit that this week, reject that, and move back lower. So you're definitely looking for that. Now, this has got higher highs, higher lows. Profile support is holding. You're dealing with resistance right now. So everything here looks pretty bullish, but know that 667 is a key level for you to be watching and observing. If you can get through that, then, Dan, then you've got 730 as your next resistance area. There's nothing that I see on the monthly chart to help us out. So let's go look at the next request. The next request was BTAI. And BTAI today may be forming an A to B equals CD to the upside. It's a swing point, which would be the day of April 18th. Did volume of 389,000 shares. So far today, you're at 135. So it looks like you're pretty close to uh, confirming an A to B equals CD to the upside with volume. You are trading above the top of its new profile. So that's another bullish outcome. That's uh, 2177. So close above 2177 would be a bullish signal. So I'd say price runs up to 2319. And 2319 or thereabouts is the weekly uh, oscillator and change line. Uh, the A to B equals CD pattern, I'm just going to calculate it on my other screen here, Dan. And uh, now the retracement was only 25% retracement. So does it really qualify as an A to B equals CD? Uh, is it not necessarily. Um, and since you've got the TD nine count patterns that are out here with today being bar number seven, just anticipate that between Monday and Wednesday, you could see a short term topping pattern or it could be longer than that in BTAI. But at this stage here, I think it heads higher with its uh, site set on the uh, 2319 ish area out there. So Dano, that, well, we got one more here. That's uh, PRQR. So we take a look at PRQR. What is it doing? So you're consolidating with inside your daily profile. Resistance at 241. And that is the center of that bullish structure profile. If this can close above 241, and then you're looking at a move up to 296. You've got a Rosemont indicator top on the weekly. The weekly is saying, I want to get back to support, and that support will be 140. Now, the reason I say that, Dan, is because price is trading below its bearish structured weekly profile. Typically, when that unfolds, we see price get all the way back to support, in this case here, the bottom of its profile. And on a monthly chart, you could, but nah, yeah, with no pattern out there. It shows that it could be a TD9 count, but you need one heck of a rally out here this month or next month in order for that to occur, in order for that pattern to unfold. So with regard to PRQR, the daily says I might want to bounce to 241. The weekly says I want to trade back to 140. So, Dano, I hope that that helps you out with regard to those three requests out there. The next request comes in from uh, Pat. And uh, Pat, Pat, Pat asks, and Pat is asking about the DeMarc system. So, no, let me see if I can find, If did this have one? No. All right, so let's read his question out here. It's a good question. I think we actually covered it. Um, uh, during the show when I was when I was reviewing one of the instruments it says if you are counting back four days which we are we're comparing a close versus a close in the TD9 count system so that's correct so if you are counting back four days and the stock price is exactly the same as it was four days ago what do you do in the DeMarc system you start over the count no longer exists if you have a if you're com you're comparing two bars it doesn't matter whether it's bar nine versus five eight versus four seven versus three see stevie doing math is amazing right i mean nine minus four and i got five I, it's amazing uh, but in any event the, the 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 fact is the way the pattern works if movements up to the top it's got to be close versus close and each close has to be higher by at least one pick one tick, one pip, one something, one penny, however it is that it trades out there. If it's equal, the pattern's going to go away. Just like we were talking about, um, God, what was it? It was, uh, I don't remember what symbol it was. Sorry, and I've already, I've, I kind of delete, I, I list my messages, I've got small small spaces, so I, but it doesn't really matter. So I think that helped answer your question. I think we answered actually in detail when I was reviewing one of the uh, one of the requests out there. So if you've got any further questions, Pat, just write back to me, I'm, I'm happy to help you out. Uh, Greg writes in, and Greg wants to take, I'm looking at a trade in TBT. That means he wants to short the 30-year treasury. Where am I at, white or black? I'm at the white. Let's change over to the black background screens here. If you give me a moment. And uh, we'll get over to the 30-year Treasury. And what the 30-year Treasury did, I want you to notice this. What the 30-year Treasury did uh, two days ago, or what, what it did yesterday, was it confirmed a buy the D-point pattern. 
So that looks like this. Here's this is, you know, it's really like a Gartley by pattern as well. Here's your A to B equals CD out here. Your A point easy to identify. Your B point's going to be the low from April 12th. The C point's going to be the high from April 12th. This does more than one, 1.272. 1 it completes the Gartley by pattern because we generate those bullish reversal candles. Now, this is a bullish structured profile. You most certainly would not go short meaning you would not go along the TBT right now. This just not in the cards. You've got support at 129.04 uh, because that bullish engulfing candle uh, look, looks very close to a hammer candle as well. Uh, you're inside this bullish structured profile. If you want to short the 30-year treasury, then wait for it to get up to 131.09, the top of that profile, at least where the sellers are. But at this stage here, you've got a buy pattern that is in place out there. So I say no shorting, no taking a position in the TBT. It's also not a great time to take a long position inside the TLT because you've got resistance at that 131.09 level out there. So, Greg, I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, TBT and TLT. And I say right now, uh, uh, look for something else other than that playground. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Oh, we got a couple more requests out here. Let's take a look at them. The uh, uh, there's really three. The first one is from Jim P. He wants to take a look at platinum. 
So let's get the platinum charts up on our screen here. We can see the platinum is forming bar number eight today of a TD9 count. So, Jim, this says prepare for at least a short-term top to form between today and Tuesday of next week. Is it today? Well, if it were to be today, we'd see some kind of topping signals on the intraday charts out here. The only topping signal that I see is on a 10-minute chart, and that's not good enough for Stevie. That just led to a consolidation with inside his profile between 11.33 all the way up to 11.46. I see, a, uh, I see a negated TD9 count top on the 30-minute time frame chart. So I don't think the top is today. I think uh, that uh, – but, but that doesn't mean that we get to higher price necessarily. We should. But uh, I, so, uh, so at this stage here where I'd, where I'd go with platinum is you've got a TD9 count top that should form between today and Tuesday of next week out there. So, Jim, I hope that that helped you out. I think your question was um, – has had a great move up the last few weeks. He analyzed the July Platinum contract. Yeah, well, so there you go. That was Jim in uh, Palm Harbor. If there's any information, other information you need, Jim, just write back to me and we'll get that uh, to you. Next request coming in from James. He wants to take a look at Kroger. KR is the ticker symbol. At least I believe that's what Kroger is. And Kroger right now, or whatever KR is, um, did that form an A to B equal CD? Did it form? It had a TD9 count top. And the question is, did this form? A, uh, a A to B equals CD pattern. So if Stevie could grab this, it did. So you've got a Gartley buy pattern. That Gartley buy pattern was confirmed on April the 17th. That has now taken price up into resistance at 48.29. If price can close above 48.29, we're looking at a run to 48.96 out there. Am I? Oh, I'm on the wrong charts. Good lord. Sorry about that, folks. Not the way that you want to end the show. Son of a gun. Well, here's your here's your Kroger charts. There's your confirmed A to B equals CD and resistance at 48.29. Let me go back real quickly here to uh, platinum chart. Sorry about that. If you take a look at platinum, you'll see that uh, bar number eight here on the daily chart. That's the upper left-hand panel. Sorry about that, folks. But look, have a fantastic Friday, a fabulous weekend. Uh, thanks for uh, being here, and uh, be safe out there. And I'll look forward to seeing you on a magnificent, marvelous Monday. Take care. Thanks for all your support.